Hi guys, my name uh, is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist and today I wanted to do a uh, little video on the subject of atrial fibrillation and in particular about bleeding risk in atrial fibrillation. Uh, and I really wanted to talk to you about the bleeding risk associated with aspirin and the bleeding risk associated with anticoagulants. Uh, now, let me just talk you through this. The first thing to say is that people who have atrial fibrillation um, have a higher risk of stroke compared to people who don't have atrial fibrillation. Uh, the second thing to say is that uh, people who have atrial fibrillation and have other risk factors um, for having stroke are, oft are generally recommended to be on some sort of medication which prevents clots from forming within the heart and thereby reduces the risk of strokes. In the past, uh, people were restricted to two agents, aspirin, which is an antiplatelet agent, and warfarin, which is an anticoagulant. Now, things have changed somewhat because, firstly, we have other anticoagulants available. Uh, in addition to warfarin, we now have these agents called the NOAX or the DOAX. Okay? Secondly, it is now recognized that antiplatelets do not really make a huge difference to stroke risk in patients with atrial fibrillation. So uh, most studies would indicate that aspirin, for example, only reduces the risk of strokes by about 20% in patients with atrial fibrillation. And therefore, it is no longer recommended to be on aspirin for stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation. Anticoagulants reduce the risk by about 60%. And therefore, now uh, most patients with atrial fibrillation are left with one option uh, in terms of stroke prevention, and that is to go on an anticoagulant. There is this, still this misconception that in some ways aspirin is safer than anticoagulants because although it's not as efficacious at preventing strokes, it in some way causes less bleeding. And I suppose that's not unreasonable because if you have an agent which is more efficacious in preventing clot formation, then surely it would see seem to figure that it would be more likely to cause bleeding. And this causes a lot of patients concern because they think, oh, in some ways aspirin is cheap, it's cheerful, everyone's on it, and therefore it's in some way safer compared to these anticoagulants, uh, which, uh, which, you know, um, are more efficacious, but thereby could also be more dangerous in terms of causing bleeding. And um, this is not true. And um, I will today just discuss an interesting study um, which demonstrates quite nicely that actually anticoagulants do not cause well one particular anti one particular anticoagulant does not cause any more bleeding compared to aspirin. So this was a study called the Avaro study. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And basically what they did, the investigators, what they did was they took 5,600 patients with atrial fibrillation and one additional risk factor for stroke, be that age, diabetes, high blood pressure, etc., etc. And these were people who couldn't, who were not suitable for warfarin or who had failed warfarin treatment in some way. And these patients were then randomized to either taking aspirin or taking this new anticoagulant called apixaban at a dose of five milligrams twice a day. Okay, And what the investigators wanted to do was they wanted to follow these patients up and try and work out which group had more strokes and secondly, which group had more bleeding. Okay, And uh, the study actually had to be terminated early because after, after about a mean of one and a half years, what a, a median of one and a half years, what they found was that they were 51 strokes or um, systemic clots in the patients who took apixaban, okay? And there were 113 in those patients who took aspirin. So they were almost double the number of strokes or blood clots elsewhere in the body uh, on patients who took aspirin compared to the patients who took apixaban.
So that proves that apixaban is a lot more efficacious. But we know that. We know that anticoagulants are more efficacious than aspirin. What is particularly interesting is to try and work out whether the anticoagulant causes more bleeding uh, compared to aspirin. And this was a very interesting study because what they found was that actually on in the patients who had apixaban, there were 44 major, major bleeds. And in the people who took aspirin, there were 39 major bleeds. So not a substantial difference at all. When you look at the very risky bleeding, which is bleeding within the head, the patients on, on in patients who were taking apixaban, there were 11 bleeds in the head, intracranial bleeds. And those people who took aspirin, there were 13 intracranial bleeds. Therefore, what this study was very, very um, useful in showing was that apixaban 5 milligrams twice a day not only is significantly more efficacious and reduces the risk of stroke uh, significantly compared to aspirin, but it is no more dangerous. The risk of bleeding with apixaban is pretty well much the same as the risk of bleeding with aspirin. And therefore, if you're going to take an agent for stroke prevention, there is no good reason to take aspirin any longer anyway. You're taking um, an agent which is more efficacious in apixaban and also equally um, <clears throat> as I suppose safe is the right word, or uh, which does not cause any more bleeding compared to the aspirin, compared to aspirin, and therefore, from my perspective, when I meet patients with atrial fibrillation who are scared of going on anticoagulants because of the risk of bleeding, I say to them, "Look, you know, there is no good evidence that these anticoagulants will cause more bleeding compared to the aspirin, and therefore, you should go ahead and just go on a um, on a Pixaban five milligrams twice a day because at least you're getting better stroke prevention, at least stroke risk prevent uh, the, your stroke risk reduction compared to aspirin. So I hope this was useful. Uh, thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you uh, so much for all your kind wishes. Um, this is my first blog of the new year, so I wanted to wish you all a really happy new year. Um, I hope this year brings with it the prospect of good health and a lot of happiness for all of you. Uh, I'm going to be try. I'm going to try and be more disciplined uh, in the coming year, and I'm going to try and put a video out every Saturday. Um, so uh, I hope to keep up with that. It's been quite hectic as always, uh, but thank you so much for listening to me. All the best. Take care.